as some of you may already know, I am stress testing a new anime shader, a new anime eyes shader that I'm compositing here with EB. But did you know that you can export cycles materials? And let's understand, everything is a cycle material here in Blender. Did you know that you can export cycle materials to Softimage? In this video, we're going to review how. Alright, the first thing I want to address is that the anime shaders are looking pretty awesome. These are very resource intensive shaders. They do not work with lights, although you can add lights if you want, but it is not necessary. I can show you this later after we do the crossover with Softimage with materials, because yes, you can export this kind of stylized shader materials into Softimage and for that you need a, a special add-on which is called the GSE import export some Softimage add-ons and when you click on that you're going to come to this page get here and once you're here you can click here for the add-on export and it will give you a zip file you can read down here but when you click on Softimage it's going to give you the add-on so you may as well right click save link as Okay, so pretty quickly, what the GSE import export IO for shorts does is that it will give you a GS format, which contains the outliner <laughs> organizations, all right, uh, for the Blender file. And the geo format is uh, in charge of all, of all of the geometric meshes. And finally, the GM format is going to give you the shader information for that. So as you can see, it's pretty easy. You just drag and drop the add-on and after that you're going to be greeted with the import export file dialog and let me walk you through that because right now what we're going to do is we are going to export this stylized shader okay so let me minimize this and let me pull this all the way over here this is um, frame 8 I'm going to go back so you can see just a little bit of animation this is animated okay and uh, animation is not supported at the moment with this import export thing, but the materials are. So you can animate in Softimage with no problems when you get this shader. Now, if I click this, of course, I'm going to get this entire huge network. And I, um, I'm not going to talk about much about this right now because all I need you to know is that I'm marking everything that you should know where to tweak so you can configure the shader however you would like. For example, the most important nodes, as you can read right here, are this one, this one, this one. This is where all of this material, or as I call them, procedural layers, will mix in. And then finally, you have the rim lights coming through after the physical reaction of a light. It posted a huge challenge to some sort of uh, mix reality and, and and stylized shading, but it was well worth it in the end because you can favor the original color versus the frost color. I'm not going to do that right now because like I mentioned before, this is a video to show you um, how Softimage reacts when you send something from Blender to Softimage using Cycles Render Engine. It's not Cycles with C, it's Cycles with S. Cycles for Softimage. And last but not least, um, Mr. Schiller, I see that you have this rendered image and you have a viewer divider. So can you explain what is that? Yes. You can see right here that the original image is this render back here. And I have this little line. But after post-processing with the compositor here in Blender, which is similar in Softimage, you can get this awesome, amazing result. So what I am posting here is that not only you can update your workflow but you can also send it back in time if you're a studio with which is still works with softimage and continue to compose it whatever you render from cycles engine so that's amazing because we already had a compositor back in softimage as blender has one and then you can activate all of these effects in order for you to get this stylized shader look so it's not enough that you come here into the render viewport and then if you click here I have a volume surrounding this entire 
scene. Okay, so let's translate this into soft image. Let's start by firing off soft image. This is a stress test number three for the stylized eye shaders. And in that test, I was looking forward to um, sculpting with multi rest in real time here in Blender. Okay, so as you can see, we have a nice little parallax effects. And yes, I will be going through sculpting because I had a lot of C brushers that asked me on my live training uh, if I can extend on that, but I haven't been able to do that because of work. Uh, but it's something that I definitely intend to do. All right, so we downloaded the add-on, which is called um, the Cycles XSI add-on, which you can find the same page, GES Importer. So drag and drop that one. And if you need to know if that went well, you can come here to the log right here. And then it says that it copied it. And the way to confirm it is to come here into file and then import. Sure enough, you can see the GES import. So what we're going to do right now is to go back to Blender. You need to install the add-on. The way you install the add-on is by obviously downloading the zip file and then come to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install, and from there you can navigate all the way to where your your zip folder is all right so once you're there click install add-on and then you should see your GSE okay import export format so you just check that and then it will work what is this going to import or export so you can see my outliner right here um, contains a lot of data with the camera the cubes points the outliner is complete right here so let's uncheck that and then I'm going to go into file export I'm going to come here into the general export scene and once I'm there I'm going to pick a folder and in my case I'm going to be calling this one ice barrier soft image because this is the way I named the scene okay so export GSE I already did so and it comes with the textures and the material shadings I'm sorry, the meshes and the materials and textures. So you just click there. There's nothing else to configure. So if you even if you click here to configure it's something, uh, you can also select objects or just the materials. But in our case, everything is as it is by default. Export GS, GES. And now let's come back into soft image. You can come here into the import, GES import. And now we're going to import this one, import GSE file. If you only want to import the geometry, you can click on this one. If you only want to import the materials, you can come here. In this case, was Ice Barrier Soft Image. I'm going to select that, and then it's going to ask me to create a new library for all the materials. Yes, I do, I want to do that, and also um, I want to override the render settings. This is important because if you have everything set up to um, mental ray, this will make sure that you will use the cycles engine so click on OK it's going to import as you can see it's working there and this is the part that most of you probably would like a little help with and that's the reason why I'm doing this video because what we see here it's the it's the scene working from Blender everything is there as you can see the multi res modifier was not applied uh, you should apply all modifiers before sending it to Softimage for them to work correctly, but that's no problem. And so we have this here. Let's. The first thing we're going to do is to switch the camera. My camera is called Camera 1, and as you can see, it's the same focal length that my camera originally had on Blender. Everything is as it should be, and it's working just fine. So we need to render this. The first thing you need to do if you just want to uh, preview here is to go to render regions all of the options switch to cycles render okay it's called cycles render correctly now so go to the page where you can get it download it and install it drag and drop it restart soft image and then you'll get it here and from here what you need to know is two things the samples are preload so this is this is four you probably should go up by um, multiples of eight for example I'm going to use 64 
samples. Uh, most of my renders are in between 64 and 128 samples. Um, some things like crystals and stuff like that will require you to go to 512, but in my case, I'm just going to go with 64 since that was this is a stylized material. It is not a realistic uh, light path material. So the next thing that you're going to do is come here where it says performance, the performance tab. You're going to go all the way down here and you're going to read the devices. This is what makes cycles very powerful. That you can render here in soft image with a modern 2020 render engine in CPU processing power and also in GPU processing power. As you can see, I have my my graphics card listed here and also I can check this one for denoising automatically so this this is something that just came out in Blender Cycles Render Engine uh, past some months ago like uh, May or something June and I'm going to check this one out so it's going to process using the CPU and also the graphical power of my Titan X card that's amazing and also you can switch the tile size um, in my case, I'm going to switch it to a very low number like this one. But if you have very have a very powerful system, you can go all the way up to 128 by 128, and that those tiles will be distributed between the CPU and the CUDA. Uh, why do I choose a small number? Because the buckets need to be uh, distributed among the CPU and the GPU. So that's it, uh, the sampling, 64, and the performance. That's all you need to, to do here. So you can close that for the preview. I'm going to switch back to my camera, my normal regular camera. Uh, right now, I don't know why the volumes are not supported as expected, so I'm going to delete this. I already did the test before uh, recording this video, so that's why I know. Let's go back to camera one again, and now let's go for the render manager. In the render manager, you're going to, again, switch your... Uh, cycles render engine and once again if you're going to be rendering the scenes you can click here and in the properties you're going to find the uh, performance again and then you can check also for the final renders the GPU and CPU devices and also let's go for the sampling which is four for the general render now we already talked about this I'm going to use 64 to to render this out okay so mr schiller this is impressive i have the the same geometry that i had on, on blender and it's here and you are telling me that i'm going to get the same materials than cycles indeed sir that's why you're watching this video and i'm so very happy to record it for you so check this out entire network from cycles is here mr schiller i can't freaking believe this you're you're telling me that if i'm already a blender user i can team up with my colleagues in soft image and send the entire network of the materials even though they are procedural even though they are vector directed even though they are you know mixed in every freaking sense and that soft image is going to pick up my material even the mix between the physical reaction shader and the stylized shader I mean, this is big news for anime. This comes like magic to me. Yeah, I know, I know. You're you're as excited as we were when we found out that this engine still goes on. Okay, so what is to do and what is not to do here? Well, right now, as you can see, this is all part of the cycles materials, which you can see list them here. And let's uh, open a queue render region. And sure enough. You're seeing your shader, your stylized shader in soft image. By the way, her name is Esteth from the anime Akani Ga Kill. It's a very amazing um, anime. And sure enough, you have them there. So, Mr. Sugar, you previously showed us that this had a a animation but right now we don't see that animation here let's go to frame six where we had our animated um our animated shader as you can see the difference in in color space it's also noticeable so you should check that soft image and blender 
have the same color uh, workspace for this to, to work correctly. And also, there's something that is going on here. Do you remember the frames that we have back there on 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 Blender? So let me go back here. Let me just minimize this. Let me maximize this one. This. So you can read procedural stretches to the right, procedural stretches to the left, and they are both mixed with an add shader. So that's on top of the network. Let's go back to Softimage, and we can see we have them right here but there is no frame see this is supposed to be the scratch shaders to the left and this is the scratch shaders to the right and it's going through a math value which is adding them just like in blender just exactly like in blender you double click this you get your 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 uh, properties for that so what do we do well if you remember here in softimage 2014 we do not have frames. I have not been able to test this on Softimage 2015 because I do not have it. So in 2015 it should be possible that you will get your frames. But anyways I think that covers it all. Oh by the way you do not have this on Softimage. The ring light direction. Listen to this. The normal is already connected to, to this kind of um, ramp shader. We have another color. Oh here we go. That's it. That's the one called color ramp 002 so it names it so this is the inner ice volume color so you can see it right here let's minimize this one and right now I'm going I'm not going to edit the entire thing but all I wanted to show you is that your tree is there your stylized shader tree so right now when I'm building this ice shaders I'm not only doing it so that you can have the blender stylized shader but also soft images. Look at that. And of course, you can animate any property you want because this is soft image. What cannot you animate? Everything is animatable. All right, so thank you very much. This has been a short presentation. I know it has been a little bit technical, but I hope you enjoyed this. And please don't forget to subscribe to my Let's channel. Go, uh, let me tell you something about the algorithm right now that I have your attention. Look. Uh, whenever I ask you to subscribe to my channel, I'm not asking it because I want to grow. I want to ask you to do this for yourself. Why? Because the algorithm detects that you like this kind of content and it will bring you more content related to this, to what you chose, to what you picked, to what you liked and what you comment. And if you subscribe, you can find out more nifty stuff that I will be uploading when this is ready to be released. So don't miss out. Thank you very much.